Thank you. She was one of the most ruthless drug traffickers in South Florida history, killing anyone who got in her way. CBS 4 News has been tracking the life of Griselda Blanco, known as the godmother of cocaine. Recently, we showed you how authorities finally caught up with her. Tonight, CBS 4's David Sutter reports on how she escaped the electric chair. It literally looked like he was just emptying some type of semi-automatic gun into the person. It was August 1982. Patricia Sisoloff was 26 and playing with friends in Miami Lakes when shots rang out. This was a nice middle-class community and things like this never, ever occurred. And sometimes it seemed like a, like a Hollywood production. Nelson Andrew was a rookie cop at the time, promoted quickly to homicide detective. In 18 months, his department saw 111 murders, all of them drug-related. The overwhelming majority of cocaine that came into this country had Griselda's name on it. For more than a decade, the case against Griselda Blanco has sat buried in the Orlando State Attorney's Office storage room. They are seven boxes full of the most horrendous crimes you can imagine. CBS 4 spent days cataloging the photos, reports, and evidence that ties Blanco to more than a dozen murders. In the end, prosecutors went after her for just three, starting with two-year-old Johnny Castro. It's February 1982, a Sunday afternoon. Johnny Castro is riding with his dad to McDonald's when a van pulls up next to them and unloads on them. Johnny is hit immediately. With his two-year-old son now by the floorboard, Jesus Castro was facing a machine gun with a silencer out his window. He had no choice but to lower his seat back and gun it. Jesus gets away, but his son would not survive. He took the child home, cleaned him up, put him in a bathtub full of ice, sat down on the bathroom floor and held the child's hand all night. He eventually left the boy at a Miami mosque for police to find. He was wrapped in a blanket, had a couple of roses and his passport in his hands uh, on top of his chest. The unsolved case would haunt Detective Andrew for over a decade. It wasn't until one of Blanco's hitmen, Jorge Ayala, made a deal with prosecutors and confessed. The motive for Johnny's death? His father refused to help one of Griselda's sons. When they went back to Griselda and said, we missed Jesus, but we killed his son by mistake, and she was ecstatic. She says, good. Griselda and her hitman, Miguelito Perez, were charged with first-degree murder, but prosecutors didn't stop there. The two were charged in a second case, parents murdered just feet away from their three young children. They were in different rooms, tied up. They were shot multiple times. There were casings uh, scattered throughout the house. Many of Alfredo and Griselda Lorenzo's crime scene photos are too graphic for television. Their children listened as their parents were tied up and threatened. Griselda was shot nine times. Alfredo Lorenzo owed Griselda some money for some drugs. The instructions to uh, Ayala were, go there, get my money. If you can't get my money, then you kill him. From prosecutor Catherine Vogel's notes, the case appears to be a slam dunk, but one box shows how it all fell apart. Star witness against Griselda was going to be Jorge Ayala. Um, there was no DNA, there was no fingerprints, there was no, very little physical evidence. I don't know if we had any ballistics or anything that we could match at the time. So the case rested on Jorge Ayala's credibility and reliability. And when the incident happened with him and uh, the secretary, Mr. Sherry Rosbach, that was it. His credibility was shot. Ayala was caught exchanging gifts and having phone sex with secretaries at the state attorney's office. It went from, from being a, a good case to nothing. The case would be taken from Vogel and moved to Orlando. Prosecutor Jeff Ashton, who lost the high-profile case against Casey Anthony in 2011, cut a deal with Blanco and Perez. With time served, Blanco was out in just seven years. It was just a lose-lose situation for us all. Griselda would be deported in 2004 back to Colombia. That same day, Jorge Ayala gets stabbed eight times in Dade County Jail. He knew what it was about. Uh, it was payback. He survived. Blanco surprisingly lived another eight years until this past Labor Day when an assassin on a motorcycle took her out. People say, who killed her? And I said, you know, take your pick. Here's a stack. Her co-defendant, Miguelito Perez, though, is a free man. Hello. Released in 2008, we spoke with his family who told us he's still here roaming in South Florida. I don't think Miguelito should be out on the street. I think that we'll again see Miguelito uh, behind bars someday. As part of Griselda Blanco's plea deal, she couldn't be charged with a murder prior to 1985. It was clearly a get-out-of-jail card. Investigators estimate that she was responsible for at least 75 murders, or as many as 300. She served just six years. 
From Orlando, David Sutta, CBS 4 News.